Hello everyone, today we're looking at an example for A-level mechanics on rough inclined planes and connected bodies, i.e. pulley systems. So what I've got here is a question that I've just compressed down into key points which we're going to tackle together and we're going to look, start by looking at the question, annotating the diagram and then doing our working out. Now it tells us in this question we have a rough inclined plane, it means that we're going to be using friction and the coefficient of friction in this case is mu which is equal to 0.2. You've got a 5 kilogram block hanging in midair and a 2 kilogram block on a rough inclined slope. And what's going to happen here is the 5 kilogram block is going to accelerate downwards and the 2 kilogram block is going to accelerate upwards. And the way we show this is just with our double arrows over here, a double arrow like that, and a double arrow like that. Now, the two blocks are connected by a light and extensible string, meaning that the tension is going to be constant throughout. And then for a final part of this question, we're going to look at how to work out the force exerted on the pulley. This is a question that does come up from time to time, and a few people kind of get a bit stuck when it comes to it. The first thing we're going to look at over here is if we are doing a question on inclined planes or any question in mechanics, we should always be labeling our forces onto our diagrams. So we have over here a 5 kg block, meaning we have our weight of 5g acting downwards and a weight of 2g acting downwards over here. We also have tension in the string acting towards the pulley. This is always the case because the 5 kg field block feels resistance through the tension over here and the 2 kg block is pulled up the slope over here. The other thing we said that we have for this scenario is a rough inclined plane, meaning we do have friction acting in this direction. Now because this system is going to move and accelerate, it means friction will be at its maximum value of mu r, which means that we are also in requirement of a reaction force on the surface, which in this case is equal to r over here, always perpendicular to the slope. Now we've got all the forces here on the 5 kg and the 2 kg block. We will come back to the forces that exist on the pulley as well a little bit later on. Now for this and what we're looking at over here, is anytime you have an inclined plane, the first thing you need to do is resolve the weight component into the parallel and perpendicular components for the weight. So what we do over here is we drop our perpendicular from here, so it should be in the same direction as R, and that is acting in that direction. And then in the same way, we wait until we get to a point where we can create our right angle and look at the parallel motion and now because the angle over here is 30 the angle in here is also equal to 30 degrees so once we've done that we now just need to label those forces on our diagram where our components are 2g cos 30 over here because it's the adjacent and then coming down the slope is 2g sine 30. And that now is a full labelled diagram. And now it's really just about getting the marks for this question and working out the tension and acceleration. And because this is a connected bodies question, to do this we always use F equals MA. So if we look at F equals MA on the 5 kg block going downwards, the net force is going to be 5g minus t so we can write over here 5g minus t is equal to 5a because we always do f equals ma in the direction of motion and then in the same way if we look at the 2 kg block we have to do f equals ma up the slope so f equals ma on the 2 kg block up the slope now for this the force is going up the slope are the tension and the forces going down the slope are the weight component of 2g sine 30 because it's actually in that direction and the friction. So this is going to be t minus 2g 
sine 30 minus mu r is equal to 2a. Now looking at this, we don't actually have the value of r yet, but we do have a value of mu. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the value of r from this diagram over here. Now because this is being pulled up the slope, the reaction force is going to be in a state of equilibrium because this block is not moving off the slope at all it's just simply moving up in that slope direction which means that r must be equal to 2g cos 30 because this these two forces are in equilibrium so we can say that r is equal to 2g cos 30 and that's when you look perpendicular on the 2kg block so if we now bring that back to this equation over here, this becomes T minus 2G sine 30 minus 0 0.2 times by 2G cos 30 is equal to 2A. And now we are just simply doing our standard simultaneous equation when we have our pulleys. When we look at equation number one over here, and equation number two over here, we are going to add those equations together, equation one plus equation two, to cancel out our t's. That gives us 5g minus 2g sine 30 minus 0 0.2 times by 2g cos 30 is equal to 7a. 2a plus 5a makes 7a. And now, if we work that out on our calculator, g has a value of 9.8. So 5 times 9.8 minus 2 times 9.8 sine 30 minus 0.2 times by 2 times by 9.8 times cos 30 gives us, on the left-hand side, a value of 35.8. And when we divide that by 7, our acceleration is equal to 5.1 two or 5.115 meters per second squared so we have our acceleration there to work out the tension we can simply substitute that acceleration into either of these two formulae i'm going to sub it into this one over here because i think it's a little bit nicer so if we substitute into that we can say 5g minus t is equal to 5 times by 5.115 and then if we bring the t to the right hand side, t is equal to 5g minus 5 times 5.115, which is equal to 25.58. So if we work that out, the tension in this case is equal to 23.4 newtons. So t is equal to 23. 23.42 newtons. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just write those values over here because we're going to use, well, the tension in a moment. So the acceleration was equal to 5.115 and the tension is equal to 23.4 newtons. A very, very standard way of working out the forces or the value of t and the value of a which we've seen in previous examples we're now going to come to the second example so this wants us to find the force exerted on the pulley now this pulley is also in equilibrium and actually what you find is that when the forces are acting on the pulley in this diagram the tension is pushing up and the tension is pushing up over here this creates these tensions on the pulley in response, which means that if this pulley is being pulled downwards and over here, there must be a force in this direction keeping that balanced. And the best way of thinking about that is just in terms of these two tensions that are acting on the pulley. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to turn this over and say, well, our pulley is acting over here and there are so here, there's a tension acting like this and a tension acting like this. 
Now, I can't work that out because we, we, I can't work it out looking at that, but when we've got forces in mechanics, what we do is we put these forces, what we call head to tail. If I think about this tension acting on the pulley and then this tension acting on the pulley, the reaction force is in this direction over here. That is our overall force acting on the pulley. Now I've created a triangle here. We already worked out in the previous part that the tension is equal to 23.42 newtons. Tension is equal to 23.42 newtons. We now have a triangle with two lengths. Now we can work out F if we have an angle by use of the cosine rule. And actually we can work this out as well because we know the angle in here. If we think about this, this tension was acting in this direction. Now that was 30 degrees above the horizontal. So if this angle over here is 30 and this is 90, the collective angle in there is 120 degrees. We now have the ability to work out the value of F using the cosine rule. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to say, when we use the cosine rule, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. The angle is A, so our little a is F. So F squared is equal to T squared plus T squared minus 2. T times T is T squared again, cos 120. And all we are going to do now is substitute in our value into the equation. So we get from this t squared, t squared plus t squared minus 2t squared cos 120. That gives you a value for f squared equal to 1,646. That means F is now equal to a value of 40.6 newtons or 40.57 newtons. So what we've done there, the real key thing there is to take these two tensions, put them onto your diagram, head to tail, i.e. one force followed by the other force. The resultant of that force is the last length of the triangle, and using the tension values from the previous part and the missing angle, we can use the cosine rule to work out the missing force. I hope that's made sense. If it hasn't, please leave a comment below or let me know separately. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye.